Nvidia announced the RTX 30 series of graphics cards, and while the hype on these cards has been at an all-time high, can we believe the performance claims? Is Big Navi dead on arrival? Should you buy now? Let's get into it. People seem to be losing their minds over this announcement. They are calling the RTX 30 series amazing, insane, they're blown away. So much hype, is it warranted? Many seem to be taking the Nvidia marketing materials as is and concluding that this is the greatest generational upgrade and that Big Navi has no chance. Now I am not going to go over all the performance claims with the teraflops numbers they showed and how CUDA cores have doubled since those are there to get you to think that performance has also doubled. This is simply not the case. This is a new GPU architecture and when they release the white paper describing the architecture we'll get a better understanding but you simply cannot conclude a doubling of gaming performance just based on CUDA cores and teraflops. Also, the ray tracing improvement over the RTX 20 series was not explicitly shown and not enough detail given, so I will not be covering those claims. Part of the reason people are losing their minds in calling this the greatest generational upgrade is due to this chart titled Greatest Generational Leap. This chart is both evil and pure genius by the people at Nvidia's marketing team. Let me explain why. This chart shows the relative performance increases over several generations. It should have been labeled the greatest generational leap from the GTX 980, since all of the performance improvements shown is relative to the performance of the GTX 980 sitting at one times performance. So naturally, as you look at the chart, the improvement of a 1080 over a 980 has a certain gap. Then the gap grows when comparing the 2080 Super to the 980. And finally, the greatest gap is the 3080 over the 980. However, most people don't view this chart with that reference in mind. They look at the gap from the 1080 over the 980 and then compare that to the larger gap of the 2080 Super over the 1080 and then the huge gap between the 3080 and the 2080 Super and conclude, yes, the 3080 is the greatest generational leap in performance. But it isn't. That should not be the metric. The metric should be what is the performance improvement from the current generation to the next generation? Since Nvidia provided the chart, we can perform some calculations. So from a 980 to a 1080, we have a 69% improvement. From a 1080 to a 2080 Super, we have a 58% improvement. And then from a 2080 Super to the 3080, we have a 65% improvement. Not exactly the greatest generational leap, but most will not come to this conclusion again both evil and pure genius. To NVIDIA's marketing team and their creativity, I say bravo. I was also interested in the performance improvement they showed from the 980 Ti to the 1080 Ti, and then the 1080 Ti to the 2080 Ti. And what I found is that those numbers look awfully familiar. So I went back to the time spy charts that I used in my previous videos to compare performance. If you have not seen those videos, I would recommend you watch those to understand the charts and I'll leave a link above and in the description below. I went back to those charts and I calculated the generation to generation improvements and then compiled them into a table. This table compares the generation to generational improvements as calculated from Nvidia's chart versus what is calculated from the time spy chart. Starting with the generational improvement from the 980 to the 1080, the Nvidia chart shows a 69% improvement, while the time spy chart shows a 65% improvement, which is only a 4% difference. The improvement from the 980 Ti to the 1080 Ti is 70% from the Nvidia chart versus 71% for the time spy chart, which is only a 1% difference. The 1080 to a 2080 Super is 58% versus 53% for a 5% difference, Finally, the 1080 Ti to a 2080 Ti was a 44% improvement from the Nvidia chart versus 46% for the Time Spy chart for just a 2% difference. Looking at these values, we can see no more than a 5% difference between the two charts. From this, we can conclude two things. First, the data in the Nvidia chart correlates well to the Time Spy chart. Second, since they provided us the 3080 point on the chart, we can calculate the Time Spy score at least to within 5% since we don't know the precision of the data used in the NVIDIA charts. The 3080 at a 65% improvement over a 2080 Super would place the Time Spy score at just over 18,500, while the 3080 at a 37% improvement over a 2080 Ti would place the Time Spy score at just under 19,000, so that tells me that we can expect Time Spy scores in the upper 18,000s. That is better than the leak that we had a couple of months prior which was at 18,253. 
This is exciting since the 3080 will be a very nice generational upgrade. Not the greatest, but very nice. This chart is not without its imperfections. For example, if you declare a 3080 as two times the performance of a 2080, then you need to put the 2080 on the chart. It is not. And it is not two times the performance of a 2080 Super, which is on the chart. Also, when does being the same performance level on a chart mean it's faster? How does the same equal faster? Come on, NVIDIA marketing. Do better next time. Okay, let's move on. Why is everyone going bananas over the 3070 being as fast as a 2080 Ti? Back in my video after the GTC keynote, link above, I put in that video that typically, in terms of performance, the current gen 80 Ti series cards becomes the next gen 70 series cards. Why is this such a surprise? This is typical. This is normal. If you don't believe me, just look at the data. Look at the time spy charts. If we note the 80 Ti and then the 70 series cards, let's see how the scores compare. The 970 scores similar to a 780 Ti. The 1070 scores similar to a 980 Ti. The 2070 Super scores similar to the 1080 Ti. And now the 3070 is similar to a 2080 Ti. Even Nvidia's own chart shows the 2070 Super similar to a 1080 Ti. Again, this is not amazing, insane, wow, or even the greatest. Again, this is typical, this is normal. However, looking at Nvidia's chart, it became clear to me why people are so excited. It's really not about the performance, it's about the money. You see, in the past, you would not lose that much in one generation. For example, if you bought a 1080 Ti for $700 and two years later, the 2070 Super matches it for $500, then you lost $200. Now, with the 2080 Ti priced at $1,200 and the 3070 matches its performance at $500, now you just lost $700. Apparently, that extra $500 gets people excited and is proof positive that the 2080 Ti was priced way too high. What are the pros and cons of the 3080? First, performance. For the 3080, the uplift from the Turing generation looks very real. Second, ray tracing and DLSS will be faster. However, they didn't provide enough details, but expect better. Third, prices did not rise for gamers. And I would argue the 3090 is not for gamers. What are some of the cons? First, power and heat. Not much has been said about 320 watts. With the 750 watt power supply recommendation, you may have to spend money on a new power supply and the prices of those have gone up considerably over the past couple of years. Also, the heat. I can tell you from personal experience with Fury, Vega, and Radeon 7, those were all were around 300 watts, that playing games for several hours in a room size of four meters by four meters will heat it up. Second, high power typically leads to running hotter, and running hotter typically leads to lower reliability. You can say that about any silicon-based electronics. It's just the physics of the issue in using silicon at higher temps. So you'll need to put some thought into having good airflow in your case, and you may want to consider water cooling. Third, limited VRAM. Running at 4K is limiting with 8 gigabytes in the 3070, and 10 gigabytes is on the low end for a 3080. For me, it seems like Nvidia is holding out. For the last two generations, the flagship GPUs in the 1080 Ti and the 2080 Ti had 11 gigabytes of VRAM. The new flagship, the 3080, has just 10. It seems like there are two more cards with more VRAM in Jensen's big oven. It seems Nvidia is keeping its best cards in the oven until the release of Big Navi. Speaking of Big Navi, Many people have written off Big Navi and come to that conclusion based on NVIDIA's marketing material. It's easy to do since AMD hasn't said a word about RDNA 2 since March. We really don't know anything about Big Navi. Sure, we had a rumor about die sizes and compute units. However, just a rumor, nothing more. We really don't know how many compute units will be in Big Navi. One rumor has Big Navi being released as an 80 compute unit and 72 compute unit versions with 16 gigabytes and 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Another rumor by Cortex suggests that AIBs are preparing Big Navi to compete with the 3070, that it will only be 15% better in performance over the 2080 Ti. I don't think that's Big Navi. I think it's RDNA 2, but not Big Navi. I think that for two reasons. First, if you remember in my last video, I discussed three performance possibilities for RDNA 2. 
If we consider the conservative performance level based on RDNA 2 in the Xbox Series X, it should achieve 15% performance over the 2080 Ti by a mid-level RDNA 2 with about 60 compute units. That is not the 80 compute unit RDNA 2, otherwise known as Big Nobby. Second, if the AIVs are just receiving the die in memory in September, there is no way they can do all the verification testing by the October-November timeframe. Verification testing takes months to set up, run, and analyze. These die and memory delivered in September sounds like they would be for products that are to be released in the first quarter of next year. AMD has been silent on Big Navi and they need to ramp up the marketing to show that it's real. It's coming and it's really good. To give people a reason to pause hitting that order button for the 30 series RTX GPU. The ball is in your court AMD. Give me a reason to wait for Big Navi. Give me something. Like it if you learned something, share it, that really helps the channel. Subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching. Wait, 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 wait. What about the 3090? Well, for those who are interested in the 3090, I would project that with 20% more CUDA cores and memory bandwidth, that would translate into another 13 to 17% performance on the chart. It is the king, but it'll cost you. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.